A while back ago, I did make an episode about all the equipment I'm using. I had a Zoom H6 recorder, amongst other things. Now, I have actually changed a lot of the gear since then, and um, I'm actually very happy with it. And so, if I look at my whole journey since I started a few years ago to where I am today, there are a few devices where I personally feel it was worth every single penny. It was like shockingly expensive, to be honest. Like, oh my, am I? Come on, I'm not attracting million of views. Can I? Should I? Etc. But it also turns out if it's a time saver, that was actually worth quite a bit to me. And so today I want to talk to you about what are those devices that if I were to sell everything today and start later again and buy everything again, those devices would be the absolute top on purchasing. Now, number one on lighting is Aperture. Aperture, I did not know the brand. I saw it from other video bloggers that use it. Aperture makes the best light. I have one of their expensive ones that is a 120D Mark II. I'll put links for all of them and don't worry, I'm not gonna make any money if you buy them, so feel free to buy them wherever. Maybe you find them used with the big light though. The good thing is the light is unbelievable natural. Like, I was blown away. I, I don't do anything with like color correction, that's it. I just use this light. Now the good news is while well, this one is like a 800 with dome, let's say thousand dollar light. They now have a cheaper series, which I actually use in the back as a backlight to help me separate myself from the background because my office is actually not that big, which is actually very much well enough. So any light I have now will be aperture. I wouldn't buy anything else. The only other light I've ever had that also has a very natural light is the Elgato desk light. It's just with my setup, it's really hard to use. But that from a light quality was also very good. But otherwise, aperture plus there's almost no fan noise. At least I don't hear any fan noise in my recording, which is awesome. So lighting, brand, aperture. Now the camera setup, what I'm using right now, I haven't changed. It's still the Panasonic Lumix GH5S that I'm using. And overall, I'm very happy with it. The one problem I did notice over the time is really the autofocus is not the fastest. And so a lot of people love the Sony Alpha 7S Mark III. It's just a super heavy expensive lift and the Panasonic does film in 10-bit colors, which is pretty unique and allows specifically for blue backgrounds or just colorful backgrounds to go in very smooth, where if you film in a lower bit resolution, then there might be an issue. And so I still recommend the GH series from Panasonic because you do get a lot of money for the buck compared to what other cameras cost. Then audio. Audio is often something overlooked and has been something I've never really been very happy with. I did find a person online, a link to him, that does a lot of testing of microphones and settings and just shows you how you can improve the audio quality. That helped me personally a lot to improve mine. But there was also one device that he recommends, and he actually doesn't say you have to buy it. He never says that, but there's this company called Sound Devices. They come from making audio recording, field recorders, really for professional. But then they have like a, not the full Hollywood version, a little bit of a lower end version. It's still quite pricey. It's called the Mix Pre Series. There's like different sizes depending on how many inputs you want. But the special thing about sound devices, and just to be fair, Zoom now has a device too, they can record audio in what is called the 32-bit float. Now with 32-bit float, the awesome thing is you can't clip. Audio clipping means is if you're too loud, and if I get excited, yeah, then it would light up. You will try with a limiter to block that, but my Zoom device, for example, had a digital limiter, which you could tell it just distorts the audio that it's not useful anymore in basically post-production, you're losing it. And if you don't have a dedicated person or you don't have like ways with headphones to monitor your levels, it's nothing more frustrating than if you sit down, put a topic together, then you go in post-production, it's like, oh my goodness, the audio file is crappy. I have spent, before I had this device, hours, hours with plugins and other things trying to save it because 
redo the whole thing, depending if I was at my home or somewhere else, was just very, very difficult. And so, as a field recorder, that's the device, and there's an awesome setup where you basically go even from the sound devices out into the camera. So I can sync up the multi-track recording and the other one, but often it's actually not even necessary. And then obviously, even though if you have a great recorder's microphone do matter, I do have different microphones over the years that I tried. I had the Rode wireless microphone. I have a Rode one on the camera that I use, for example, with a GoPro. My wife was driving while I was setting up Azure Percept and I will link it. Then I actually brought the sound devices recording with me as well. Went from the Rode video mic into it and I just love the results and the quality. Super easy for me to set up and ever since I have that, I'm like, I can't believe I waited that long. But before you now head out and buy all these things, there was just this week where I saw an episode from a vlogger I watch from time to time, who was talking about it, that today with, you know, TikTok and all them like, Instagram Reels, YouTube has these short videos where it's all raw. It's not a studio set up like this. There is no post-production, it's you and your phone. Some even use, you know, like the normal, say Apple, the AirPods to record themselves and that's it. Because for me, once I record this, I have different SD cards, I put it on the computer, I go into Adobe Premiere, <laughs> put it all together, cut things out. And so there's a lot of time investment. So besides creating content, the production piece is big, even setting just up all the lights, it's kind of a lot of work. It seems to be very acceptable today to make very raw footage. So it's a little bit up to you what level you want to produce. That kind of like is a, would be an idea or guide you if you actually want to invest it. If you want the studio set up, my work goes aperture for light, nothing else. Sound devices for the field recorder, the Mix Pre Series. Still happy with my Panasonic Lumix GH5S. If I had the money, I would definitely buy the Sony A7S Mark III because that also has 10 bit recording and 4K, but it's I think 3,500 new and I haven't found anything that is in my range that I would be willing to invest. So if you want to learn more about my workflow or learnings, please leave it in the comments. And if you found it helpful, please consider subscribing. Would love um, to provide valuable content to all of you. And with that, D-Dave Kurt out.